You don't need to be a graphic designer to create beautiful professional looking content in Canva. You just need to know what to tweak. In this video, I'll show you three small changes you can start making right now that will instantly improve your designs and make your content look much more professional. This applies the same if you're designing Instagram graphics, YouTube thumbnails, or a presentation for your offer. So this will work for anyone who uses Canva. These three things will take you from, well, I just picked a template and run with it to, wow, this does look kind of polished. I'm Natalia and I help you create better content and grow on social media. So let's do this. One of the biggest telltale signs of a beginner designing in Canva is the line spacing. Now, let me explain why. When you add a text box in the Canva editor, very often the space between the lines is set a little awkwardly and usually it's because the lines are way too far from each other. The point of line spacing is to make the text easily readable and if they are too spaced out, the text feels much more disjointed. You want your lines to feel like they belong together, like one cohesive message and not just a bunch of floating words. Luckily, we have a very simple tool to adjust it in Canva, but beginners just often overlook it. Once you click on your text box and go to this icon right here, you can see that shows spacing and actually defaults for line spacing to 1.4. And this is something that you really need to look out for. Let me explain why. I'll hit T for a new text box and I'll just move it to the top. And when I go to spacing and when I click on it, again, you see that defaults to 1.4, which is a little big for headlines. When I start to separate the text, so let's say I'm doing your paragraph and text. Now it doesn't look too bad. I would still say that it's a little bit too disjointed, but the moment I start to make it bigger, just to make it a, an actual headline, this becomes really spaced out and this is definitely not what we want. So this is exactly what happened with this one. Let me just go to spacing and try to adjust it. I would go for something as low as one. I prefer mine to be a lot more narrow, but if you go for something like 1.2, that should work absolutely fine too. It will depend on the size and the style of the font itself. So you will have to adjust it. Anything that feels a little bit more natural will do well and make sure that it's readable, that none of the letters in here connect in an odd way. So I would go for something like maybe 1.05 in here. I think that should um, do pretty well with this one. Now, in terms of the text in here, you can see that it doesn't really stand out too much, but I would still go for maybe something like 1.2 for this one, just to make it a little bit easier on the eye. I'll do the same for the second one, just because we're trying to be as consistent as possible. And you can see that from here, it all looks a little bit better. Now, as a bonus tip, as an extra tip, what we have available in Canva now in advanced formatting here at the top is actually kerning, which means that it's the letter spacing for visual balance. Now, it means that everything in between, so we can see the C and O or the O and N, it needs to be kind of optimally balanced. And if you just click on this one, if you toggle it and change all, you will have this automatically improved for all of your text, which is a great option to have toggled on because it bases everything on this kind of visual refinement. Now, granted, I do like my line spacing a little tighter. So I tend to go for one, two, one, two, three in general. So if it is more on brand for you, by all means, go with what you feel works better, but try to be consistent with it. The only thing I'd say is that if you have a lot of text or use a dark background with light text on it, it automatically means that it can be a little harder to read and could do with a slightly wider line spacing. This one small change makes your design feel much more structured and way easier to read. It's really a difference between a quickly kind of customized template to something that looks a little bit more put together and polished. Now, every balanced design has to have a hierarchy so that people know what the most important elements are and what they should read first. It happens on a subconscious level and makes absorbing the design much, much smoother. Now, a very common thing you'll see among beginners using Canva is that they throw elements and text boxes together willy-nilly and don't really pay attention to how big or how small they, they are or how they align. With this example, you can see exactly what I meant by willy-nilly. Everything's been thrown in here and I see it very often when people are just starting out and trying to just piece a nice design together without really understanding the principles of design. So if you look at these, all of them are the same size. There, there's no clear sense of direction. There's no proper alignment. So let's try Try to discern what elements should really be emphasized in here and try to establish a hierarchy. 
From here, what I would pay attention to is these three pieces of text. I think these two are acting as a body text. So this is something that should be very equal. However, the bottom one is just nicely emphasized by something underneath it, but I still feel like it plays the same role within this design. Then in here, I would call this more of a headline. So I would try to make it bold just to make it stand out. Again, we're trying to fix the line spacing. So I would go to maybe something again around one or maybe one 0.5. I think that should do it in here. And now you already see the difference between the two. When you look at it as is, we have the bolding, but I feel like the headline should always be bigger than the rest. I will definitely make it big, maybe something around this much. And already you can see that it stands out. And even if everything else is not aligned perfectly, you can already see that the hierarchy was established. Now, another thing that a lot of beginners tend to do is to make everything centered, especially that very often when you add a new text box, the default is the centered alignment. So this is what the majority of people would just stay with. However, I feel like this design would definitely do with a left alignment. Now, for the majority of European languages, this is where the natural kind of flow of the language goes. We read from left to right. So the left alignment is much more natural especially with a balance of this sort. So I would go and fix all of the alignment to the left. And now that we have all three separated like this, I want to align them to the left. Let's use this Lyceria at the top as our guideline. You can, of course, use something else, but it makes things a lot easier when you have the vertical line appearing um, just to make everything perfectly aligned like this. Now, another great tip that I love to use is to use the tidy up feature. Now, I want to select all three of my pieces of text. You can do it by just dragging like I've just done it now or you can just hold shift and select all three and then you go to position and hit tidy up from the arrange tab however there's a dainty little shortcut that i use every single day of my life when i design in canva and it's alt shift t if you click on it, you'll see that it will automatically adjust the spacing in between the text boxes. So everything is adjusted nicely. You can see that they're aligned to the left and already the hierarchy is so much better than it was at the very beginning. I'll just adjust this little graphic element at the bottom. That's the little emphasis that we've got on top of what we had before. Now we see obviously the person who supposedly created this template. It was just something that I've added in here. So it's definitely um, a fake person in that regard. However, I feel like this person should definitely be bigger. So I will just make sure that that person is in here. And you can also see that in terms of the alignment for um, the text, the text curves kind of nicely um, in a almost like a pyramid style in here as a triangle. So it aligns nicely to kind of the arm area in here. I'll try to make it maybe a little bit smaller like this and then to try to adjust it from here. And you can see that already everything looks much more put together. I'll try to put a comparison kind of on the screen from what we've had before to what it looks like now. I've tweaked it even more, adjusted the spacing a little bit. So you can see that the finished design has a lot more of that good hierarchy. And this is what we're opting for. So to recap, make your headline bigger and bolder than your subhead and body text, a bold font for your main message and lighter or regular text for the supporting points, and then left line text when it makes sense. It's much easier to read, especially when you're sharing tips or steps or storytelling content. Create clear visual breaks between sections. That little bit of space can make a huge difference in how your design is perceived and how much breathing room it has. You're essentially building a content layout that speaks before the words do. Even without reading the text, your viewer should understand what matters most just from the way it's kind of arranged. That's what good hierarchy does, and it builds clarity and makes everything flow nicely. Now, this one is so, so important, and it's something that I see a lot, especially when people are just starting to explore their color palettes. You fall in love with a few colors, you throw them into a design together, and sure, it does look beautiful, but it's also kind of hard to read. If people have to squint to read your content, they won't. It's as simple as that. Not to mention people who have impaired vision, they will really struggle with this, so contrast is absolutely key. And it doesn't mean your design has to be black or white or super boring, it just means your colors should convey the message 
message properly and not just look pretty or not let the message speak at all. Here's how to check for contrast. So let's take a look here. I love the colors. Don't get me wrong. I love the colors. It's just not legible. So we're trying to fix it. The first thing you can do, of course, is to try for something a little darker, maybe something a little bit like this. But of course, it has to work with your own brand colors. So if you don't have enough contrast with them, how do we achieve it? Of course, if you're using a lighter background, we want something a little darker for the text. So you can use something off black. It will work absolutely fine as long as it does have a little bit more of that contrast. You can even go into the tonation. So something a little purplish might work in here. That already provides us with a lot more. I could go for a background swap and in here I could add a box that would look a little bit different. So I could go and add a little border, a little background from the effects tab just like this. And then for the rest, I could opt for this color or maybe this kind of uh, more blackish color. Here I ended up with something looking a little bit more like this. So again, it will depend on what you want to achieve, but make sure we're not doing anything of that nature just because it's not legible at all. And I understand if you love these little kind of dainty colors and things of that nature, listen, I get you. I know how Pinteresty and lovely it looks, but especially with script fonts like this one or just elegant fonts like that, it just doesn't work as well. This is the kind of example that I see very, very often. Now, I love this design. It's elegant. It's all the things I absolutely love. However, this text is not really legible. You can see this elegant font in here, the script font. It just doesn't work too well. Now, my first tip is to try going to effects. You can add a shadow or you can use the lift effect, which depending on the intensity and the image that you've got underneath, this can really work. So if you add a little bit of this, you can see that it already adds a little bit more of that contrast. This is it with the lift and this is it without it. Now, the second technique is to add a full rectangle to the image. I'll go for something like black in here. I just want to make sure that the rectangle is underneath all of the text or any of the overlays that you've got on the graphic and above the image, which is exactly where I have it. If you need it, you can adjust it from here. Now, what I want to do next is to actually go here to transparency at the top and you can just adjust it to anything you like based on how legible the text becomes. So you can go for something like 25, you can drop it to maybe 15, maybe to even 10. When you go to something as low as 10, make sure that everything is legible. I think for this background, it's quite calm, quite peaceful, so you can still see a lot of what's happening. However, make sure that you're paying attention to how other people can perceive it because your eyesight may be a lot better than some other people, and especially if you're looking at it on mobile. Now, this technique, what it does is that it takes away a little bit of that color correction of that kind of coloring that was intended by the photographer. So you can see that the original image is much more creamy, much nicer in that regard. So this may not work for everything. The third technique is something that will potentially be more universal depending on the image that you're using underneath. We're adding another rectangle and we're trying to go for black again. However, I'm sticking with this color and with this little icon that appears on top of the color that you've chosen, if you click on it, you can choose a solid color or a gradient and this is exactly where we're going for. Now from here you can see two gradient colors. I want to make sure that for this one both of them are the same so I'm going for black for the second one as well and I'm going to drop the transparency all the way to zero. I can choose the styles. So I'll go for this one. However I want to just swap the colors just so that that one is from the bottom to the top. I'm just going to attach it to the corner and stretch it out just like that and then I can again go for transparency and drop it ever so slightly. You can see already that I'm still retaining a lot of this original vibe that the original image has. However, I now have this extra legibility in terms of the text. And again, I can manipulate it by changing the transparency in here or changing where the gradient goes like this. So let me show you the lift and the shadow technique. The second one is the full overlay and the third one is actually just the gradient. So you've got the three options just to make sure that the text is more legible. And a quick tip here, Canva actually has a built-in accessibility feature that really helps with this. So if you go to file at the top, go to accessibility and then click check design accessibility, what that's going to do is open up this panel in here. It checks for how big and how adjustable your font is. So you can see the typography is fine. But if 
found 30 issues with my color contrast. So if I click on it in here, you can see that this text is low contrast. So it actually allows you to apply suggested text color just to match the vibe of the font. And you can just keep clicking and keep adjusting it um, to something that is suggested or keep adjusting it from here just to eliminate that issue. You can see clearly with designs like this that there are so many different points of contention. Pretty much any element on here is not really adjusted nicely. However, if you go to the correction, you can see that the contrast is sufficient and there is enough so that there are no issues coming up. So again, to recap, make sure your text color stands out clearly from the background. If your background is light, go dark with your font and vice versa. And again, it doesn't have to be true black or true white. And make sure you use bold or dark overlays when placing text over images to just give the words a little space to breathe. You can add a shadow, lift from text effects, a grading box to separate the text from the background. And of course, test everything on your phone. What looks fine on desktop can really not look great on a small screen. If you want to go deeper, I've got a full video with five Canva tips that will help you design faster. So go ahead and watch it now. Make sure to subscribe to stay in the loop. There's some exciting things coming from Canva, so it might be a good time to do this. Plus, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.